I am going to, um, I'm going to try this close up again. <laughs> I don't think I like it. I can't really see myself, but I really don't think I like it. So what I have on my face, what I've done so far this morning is I have just done a light rinse because I don't tend to really heavily do cleansing in the morning like I do at night, unless of course I'm peeling. And I'm using my Retin-A, so I've been using that, and I have had some peeling on my lower part of my face, which is understandable. And um, so I've been doing that, and then after I did that, I added my vitamin C from Timeless, my Matrixel from Timeless, and then I went over with Hyaluronic Acid, and um, and then I, I did do some eye cream. Other than that, I did uh, my sunblock. So I have my sunblock on, and that's probably why I might be a little on the shiny side because I do have my, my sunblock on. A little bit of mascara because I always have to have some mascara on. I can't function without my mascara. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and do an all over and I'm using actually a palette that I got quite a while ago and um, this is, I'll show you in a moment, um, this is ColourPop Stone Cold Fox. It's kind of well used. I don't like how it is not really easy to kind of manage and keep clean. It kind of looks always messy. And then for my all over, it's just my uh, Wet n Wet n Wild, uh, the uh, brulee. I like the cream brulee much better, but you cannot get that, so I have the powder. You know, I am just a creature of habit, so this is gonna be interesting to see what kind of look I can actually do. Most of the labels have come off of the shadow, so I can't even see what these are called. Anyways, I thought I would do a little bit of a chat-y, sort of a chat fest, I guess, type of thing. So I normally just kind of like try to create a little fake crease because I do have terribly hooded eyes. And if I'm going to work or I'm going to just, you know, be around the house and not going anywhere special, I kind of do a light everyday type of a look. And that's really what this is. This is a a very much a light everyday type of a look and this is in the third one down on the outside I wish I could read it Stone Age maybe is that what it's called Stone Age I can't tell so I'm just gonna be going and I always do the same thing I go from one eye to the other I never just completely finish a eye it just never works that way this I like the ColourPop palette, but it is kind of powdery and it does have, in my opinion, compared to, say, my Viseart, um, compared to some of my Huda Beauty palettes that I have, and um, a few other ones that I have, the ColourPop has a lot more fallout than those palettes. So that is something that I'm always, always a little concerned with. So. We'll see. We'll see how I do with this. I really don't even know how I'm gonna do. But anyways, now I'm gonna just go kind of like all over my my lower movable lid just a little bit. So I wanted to talk to you guys, right? I wanted to, <laughs> I don't even know if this is gonna be a topic that anyone really even cares about, but um, I had mentioned the, the Delphi, Indiana murders of the two girls and it just is something that has really stuck with me if you guys haven't heard about this case is like really wacky in fact the other night when i couldn't sleep and i was searching for um, a live stream on it i came across this one guy that was doing a live stream on it and he was saying how he had a whole list of everyone that talks about the down the hill aka the delphi indiana delphi indiana um, case and he said there are people that sit there and do their makeup and talk about murder he goes that's not my bag I don't like watching someone put their makeup on while they're talking about murder 
but I cracked up laughing because there is a YouTuber that's quite popular, Bailey, I think. I can't think of her of her name now, but um, I think it's I think it's Bailey something or other. And she does her makeup while she talks about true crime. So she's got, of course, a huge, huge following for that. And I think people will tune in, you know, to her channel specifically because they want to they want to know about you know the true crime and stuff like that and watch her put on her makeup i think she's a makeup artist she's pretty cool i've watched her a couple of times and i thought wow she's got you know she's got it all together she knows her cases she kind of really researches them and is able to really talk about them in a good way you know in a detailed way which i'm not going to do because i know i bore everyone to death but i have been riveted by this particular case because these two girls and up until uh, I, up until this case, I hadn't even heard of the phrase catfishing. Some of you may have already, you know, heard about it and you may know about it, but I really did not know anything about catfishing. To me, that was like a whole new thing. I'm like, catfishing? I'm picturing someone actually trying to catch a catfish in a pond or a river or something or a stream type of thing. And, and then I realized that that's actually sort of what it is, it's, but it's online. And it's where somebody has a sort of a fake ID online and they might look like a handsome young man or a beautiful young woman. And in reality, they're nothing close to what it looks like. So they kind of catfish, they kind of pull in people that are unsuspecting and hook them into this fake persona that they have. And then sometimes they even try to do a meetup, you know, um, well, most of the time they try to do a meetup. A lot of times these are people that are underage, you know, girls and even boys in some cases, they're underage. And this catfisher will have a persona of, you know, maybe a handsome person or whatever and, and just really intrigue them and pay attention to them and then all of a sudden you know this person is pulled in to the web of the catfisher you know and the catfisher reels them in and oftentimes it, it the result is not a good thing it's not a good result at all so in Delphi Indiana I think that town at the time of the murders was a population of like about 3,000. There may be more now, I'm not sure, or maybe less. But it was a small town, as you can imagine, of about 3,000. And they had a, a park, or I don't think it was a park, but it was sort of like a, a walking bridge. And I wanna say it's called the Mon, Monon High, Monon, M-O-N, let me see if I can find it really quick. I can never say the names of some of these things. But, um, of course, my, my phone does not recognize it. Monon High Bridge, M-O-N-O-N, -O -O High Bridge Trail, which is part of the Delphi Historical, Historic Trail System in Delphi, Indiana. So, anyways, the girls, and this was like there was an abandoned railroad track bridge over a stream or a river and these two girls abigail williams and liberty german had spent the night together at liberty's uh place i think it was her grandparents house where she was lives and had spent the night together there and the next day it was february 13th 2017 the next day there was no school for some reason and the weather was sort of like really warm. It was warm weather. So they had decided to go out and basically, you know, go out and basically um, walk on that bridge, take pictures, post the pictures to Snapchat. This is also called the Snapchat murders. So it's down the hill. It's um, the Delphi murders down the hill or snapchat you may have you know heard of it either you know either in all of those cases in that way but anyway so they decided that they were going to go walk the trails the path take pictures there is some speculation after the fact that they were catfished 
by um, a person that they actually caught, but they could not tie him into the murder. It's like really wacky. There's so many different moving parts and circumstances in this case. It's just mind blowing. Anyways, their, one of their sisters, Lib Libby's sister, had dropped them off, and I think Libby's father or grandfather was going to be picking them up later in the day. So they went to um, the bridge, to the park, in the trail system, I should say, and they were going to walk the trails, take pictures, and all of that stuff. They were only going to be out there a couple of hours. But the speculation is that they were going to be meeting someone there, and that somebody was probably somebody that had catfished them on Snapchat. So they thought that they would be meeting a, you know, young, handsome guy there probably. Um, who knows if they had a meeting for sure, because there's a lot of different speculation as to what actually happened. But, so they went there and apparently, I had to come a little closer. You probably can't see me, but that's okay. So they went there and apparently um, there was a number of other people that were sort of walking the trails that day. It was really a nice, nice afternoon. And the girls, that they disappeared. They disappeared from that trail system. And that was on February 13th, 2017, when they disappeared. And it was super, super sad because they ended up being found the next day. But on that particular day, when they went there, it was really nice. They were dropped off by the sister, like I said. And then the, I think it was the father or the grandfather was going to pick them up. Well, when the grandfather came to pick them up, they were nowhere to be seen nowhere and I think he probably tried to call their cell phone or Libby's cell phone and couldn't get through and immediately started by calling the grandmother by calling other relatives immediately started to you know highlight hey we can't find the girls did they come home you know all that kind of stuff and they didn't they hadn't come home so the family kind of gathered at the trails and you know people were going all over the place looking for them Oh. And I think it was about maybe six o'clock or so when they called the police. It might have been earlier. I don't I don't really remember when exactly they called the police, but then they called the police and then a full, you know, a full search started to happen. Because it, it's a small community. Like I said, there was only I think about three thousand people in that community. Oh my gosh. I had something on my brush. Look what I did. I had something on my brush. Um, that's what I get for picking up a dirty brush when I did it like this. When I, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh well, I will. Uh, I will have to get a different, a different brush. I must have dipped this in the black by mistake and then went and dipped it in the brown and it's like, holy camoly. So anyways, now I forgot where I was. The community is like about 3,000 people in this whole town of Delphi, Indiana. So pretty small community. And I think probably pretty well tight-knit community where a lot of people knew everybody. And before you knew it, I mean, the word had spread, right, that these girls were missing and people were going up to the trails to go and look for them. The police were called. Police went out and, you know, everybody was searching for them. And unfortunately, it wasn't until the next day, and I'll never forget it because that's when I actually, I can't believe I did that. Holy mackerel, my eyes are a mess. Um, it wasn't until the next day in reality that they were found and they were found murdered and the authorities kept a pretty tight lid on exactly what had happened to these girls you know so nobody really kind of knew anything that had happened they just knew that they had been found dead and there was speculation and all that stuff but the authorities did a press conference and the um the police they were talking like they like it had to have been someone in the community because first of all the bridge that they were on 
this is a uh, it's sort of an abandoned railroad bridge over a lake or not a lake but more like a river and stuff like that so the way the wooden plats somebody to go out there and walk that had to have known the area basically that's the speculation so they really were struggling to try to find out who this person was that the girls might have met if anyone there because they obviously you know uh, encountered somebody so when they were found the two of them there was all sorts of different rumors and and you know the investigation went all over the place in the community they were trying to figure out who it was and it was just one thing after another and it took years and I was uh, there was a podcast that I was listening to was called down the hill because one of the girls Liberty Libby had her cell phone with her and she actually filmed what was speculated to be the abductor murderer she actually filmed this person approaching them and on the film you could see this person walking on the bridge which is because of the slats that were missing it was an abandoned railroad bridge and all that i think that was a speculation that it had to be someone kind of local to the area uh, or somebody that knew the area anyways she had filmed this person walking up to them and you could hear on you could see him you could see physically kind of what he looked like even though the footage wasn't super clear but you could hear him go guys down the hill guys down the hill and you could hear i think probably abigail saying to liberty he has a gun he's a gun type of thing so um they were forced down a hill and how long that video recording went beyond what was released as anyone's guess because they haven't released it they you know they say that it stopped right after that which could well have been because you've you've got to remember that when they were late to be picked up or whatever the grandfather was calling the cell phone number and sometimes when you know people call the number it uh, you can get disconnected you know if you're filming and all that so anyways long story short years later i mean years later this happened in 2017 mind you right years later i'm putting a little bit of um i'm almost out of this this is my fiera concealer oh my gosh i love it i put it on my scar right here and i go down to where my scar is you know from my mose surgery and then i'm going to kind of cover my nose a little bit because I have a lot of redness and I have some broken capillaries or veins on that side even though my skin looks a heck of a lot better than it has in and for eons I mean for eons eons and I'm super excited because I am going to get holy camoli any day now and I wish it was here already I am going to actually get the um narrow system and I'm like holy camoli so what I'm doing right now is I am putting the critique and this is the under eye brightener on so you can see what I really like about the Fiera and sometimes I just use the lightest Fiera to brighten up and sometimes I use the critique right now I'm using obviously the critique to brighten up and the uh, Fiera um, coverage I mean the coverage on my Fiera is really awesome I'm looking at myself pretty close up with this little tiny mirror and this is already melded into my skin I know my eyes don't look that great but it's already melded into my skin it is amazing but anyways I am getting the Nara system oh gosh what I hope to do with the Nara when it arrives and I think it's going to arrive today is I'm going to focus in it's a, it's a laser and it, you it you probably have heard all everyone talking about this because people are just raving about this whole system but I'm going to focus in on spots above my lip my nasal lobia folds my jolly area I'm going to focus in on that and I think I'm going to try to go here on my wrinkles you know my um 
my eyes, you know, my, my um, crow's feet and all that stuff. My red light therapy mask covers my whole face, but does, I don't have anything here. And I really think that the narrow will just super, I'm going to have the, I'm getting the precision one, not the big, bigger one, not the pro one that does the whole face. But I really think that it is going to be awesome for me to utilize and go through my whole, you know, to go over those spot areas where I don't think the red light therapy can really get, especially the smoker lines above my lips. I haven't smoked in years, but I did smoke. And, um, and those, those spots are spots that, right now anyways, my therapy system that I have, the mask does not have. And I don't know of anyone that does have the, the lights that goes up that high. So I'm using my Estee Lauder. I am going to try the Lady Gaga foundation. I just haven't gone to Sephora to get color matched. I am going to do that. And I have made my mind up. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to get the, um, the, the new Huda palette. I know. I need it like I need a hole in my head. But I want to get the new Huda palette. So ColourPop Vogue is going to be my blush. I know, guys, you see this one all the time. Put this on. Anyways, the twists and turns of the down the hill, Delphi, Indiana. Holy mackerel. So years later, mind you, small town communities happened in February of 2017. Their bodies were found on my birthday, Valentine's Day. So I always remember seeing that news break and I'm like going, oh my gosh, these poor girls are out taking a walk in the woods. And that resonates with me because I like going for walks in the woods. So anyways, um, years later, they arrested, I think it was the pharmacist, or he worked in the pharmacy department of, I think it was the local CVS in that community. And he, he was a, a well-known community member. He, um, he also, like if you went in the store, I mean, I guess he even printed out uh, the not wanted full, no, well, it could have been wanted, but he did. He printed out some of the folders or the flyers when they were looking for whoever did this, you know, and had it displayed. He printed it out in a store for the, for the community, had all of the, because they had taken the still picture from the person that was walking on the bridge that Libby had filmed. I mean, she filmed this person walking up to them. Can you imagine? She must have known. They must have had a really bad, bad feeling. And if this was the person that they thought they were meeting from Snapchat, because there is speculation that they had gone to the bridge to meet a person who, um, you can Google Anthony Schatz, I think, was the, was the um, catfisher. And he had an image of himself on Snapchat as a really good looking, rich guy, you know. And he befriends these two girls or one of these girls. And the speculation is that they were going to be meeting him there. Um, you know, I mean, they were teenagers, right? So they were going to be meeting him there. This good looking guy pays attention to you and you're like going, whoa. You know, uh, yeah, so they were going to be meeting him there, and, you know, they were all excited for this sort of rendezvous, rendezvous with this person, rendezvous, is that how you pronounce it? And um, when, when this person that was there, which they don't know if it was at all tied into the meeting that was arranged via Snapchat, or if it was all just circumstances. And they think it was circumstances. I mean, can you believe that? How, how in the world, you know, could things like that happen? Circumstances like that happen? I don't know. But anyway, so they arrested this pharmacist guy, Richard Allen is his name. 
and it is a shock in the community. I mean, can you imagine your local pharmacist or somebody that works in the pharmacy that has the, you know, posters up all over the store that's an active member of the community? Can you imagine being arrested for this horrific murder, which totally devastated this town, 3,000 people, you know? And um, so they arrest him, and oh my gosh, of course, the newscasters, the podcasters, everyone just went crazy, but all of the information was pretty well sealed. You know, nobody knows how they were really, how they really died. Nobody knows what happened to them. Nobody knows nothing because everything was sealed. So he had, Richard Allen had public defenders assigned to him, two of them, I guess well-known attorneys. And Ultimately, I mean, this is the fiasco. It happened in 2017. Within the last two months, his two public defenders somehow actual crime scene photos with their bodies in the photos got leaked out from the defense, somehow from the defense side. And the judge found out about that. The judge got totally bull. They had a meeting in chambers and ultimately the two attorneys resigned because they were public you know public defenders or whatever you know they were put on there they were not even you know they weren't private attorneys that were hired right the state was paying their fees or the town or however that works so they ended up having they ended up leaving withdrawing and they they actually came out and said that they were forced to withdraw forced to withdraw um because of the leaked photos and all that stuff. So now they, now Richard Allen has two other attorneys. I know I'm not making any sense on this, right? You guys are going, she's wacko. But Richard Allen has two other attorneys now that are defending him that he really doesn't want to defend him. And everyone, the attorneys that had um, withdrawn from the case had said that there was a cult. I'm going to read it. I think I have it in here. Um, he was arrested in October of 2022 and Abby was 13 and Libby, Liberty, Libby was 14 at the time that they were murdered and their bodies were found at, under down the hill on the creek on, on Valentine's Day. So they, now the defense is alleging after after they got kicked off um, the case, the defense had alleged, and the new defense are alleging, that the um, Richard Allen, their their um, client, was not involved in this at all, and that this was actually part of a white nationalist cult that sacrifices humans. Can you imagine? And it was all part of their whole cult and their whole symbolism. There was all these different things on there that, you know, that um, there were all these different things and signs in the woods where the bodies were found. And of course, now the pictures, the crime scene photos were leaked so everyone could see it. And they were saying that there was all these signs of the cult and, and everything like that. And they were, they basically, I mean, if you, if you were a cult, right? And you were going to kidnap people? Would you do it in your backyard? <laughs> That's what I don't understand. If I was, uh, I mean, I can't imagine ever even doing that, but if I was going to commit a crime, if I was Richard Allen and I was going to commit these these, this crime. That's why I'm thinking whatever happened, if it was him, had to have just been a freaky thing. I don't, I mean, I can't imagine I hate when that happens. Uh, when um, my battery died. So I'm probably not in the same spot. But if I was going to be doing something like that, I don't think I would do anything like that in my own backyard. I just don't think, you know, and, and I really, this is the Sephora number three. That's that imported little
cardboard lipstick. I really like that lipstick. I think it's really nice. And this is the Sephora lip gloss. I've had this forever. Not anything new. But I'm not too happy with my eyes because I really messed them up when I, uh, when I used the wrong brush. But I don't think that if I was going to do something like that, I would do it in my backyard. So I can't imagine this pharmacist. I think it was just all by chance. You know, maybe he had always been thinking about doing something like that. I mean, who knows what evil lurks behind people, you know, in people's heads and stuff like that. So maybe this is something he was always going to do. I don't know. But I just can't imagine doing something like that in your own backyard with people seeing you walking on the bridge. I mean, he was seen there, right? He was in, even if he didn't know that he was being filmed at that point in time, he was passing other people that were walking. So there were people there that saw him and he actually brought it to the law enforcement's attention that he was out there that day. And, and then if it was this cult, this Nordic uh, type of a cult, what is it called? I forgot the name of the cult now. Um, if it was this cult, which I think is just so bizarre, but before the two attorneys were taken off the case, they had filed a 136-page um, document, right, um, that they were trying to overturn the search warrants and all that and stating their case and exactly what happened. But they said that the girls were killed by members of a pagan Norse religion and white nationalist group known as Odinist, O-D-I-N-I-S-T-S. And since that time, since the photos of the crime scene with the victims were leaked to the public, allegedly by the defense attorneys, they were then forced to withdraw, and then there were new defense attorneys put on, and that now that they're all saying that the judge, the police, <laughs> The prosecutors, everybody is part of this whole cult thing or whatever. I mean, some of the, some of the, I watch a lot of the YouTube live streams. Some of it's been like totally insane. Anyways, I don't even know what to believe. But do you, let me know if you guys actually, I got to clean my brushes. Let me know if you guys actually have heard of this, actually have watched this or been you know, listen to some of this because it is like an unbelievable story. So when I come back, I have my hair fixed and I'll close this up. <sighs> so I ended up spilling coffee on my sweater and I was like, oh my gosh. And it went all over the floor. And then I had to run in the house to try to, you know, I had to change. So that was like one thing after another. Um, but so that's sort of my my simple look, I'm still blending, and I do that a lot, is I end up, before I go out, I end up blending and blending, and I'll look in my car mirror sometimes, I'll look in my little mirror as I'm walking around, because, you know, you all of a sudden you see a glob here, a glob there, and I don't know about you, but I, I'm not the world's greatest eyeshadow person at all. One of these days I'm going to do a really cool color. But I'm not the greatest eyeshadow person, so I always am in fear that my eyeshadow is not blended and that I look like a clown. I'm sure you probably have seen people that, um, at least I know I have, and especially in real life. Um, I've seen people walking around and it's like you want to tell them, you need to go back and redo your eyes. You know, your eyeshadow is just not blended. So I think this is pretty blended. I wanted to put a little spark of purple in, but I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna even show up. It really doesn't. But it is what it is. So yeah, that story, the Delphi, Indiana, down the hill. Um, can you imagine? I cannot imagine a number one, working in a small community and then just randomly killing two girls on a trail in that community. I just can't imagine that. And I also 
can't imagine a cult you know being there and that somebody has to really have a wacky conspiracy theory mind i was listening to this one podcast and i think the guy is from australia and i've heard him mentioned a couple of times he's got a youtube channel i should say i've heard him mentioned a couple of times as just being off the wall so i found him and i said well i'm going to listen to him and just see for myself the guy's a cuckoo all he did the entire time was just yell at yell and yell and and he acts like he knows exactly what i want to reach through the, the camera and go were you there are you actually the murderer is that why you know exactly what happened and why you're so sure it's this you know page and cult and you know and all of that stuff i mean if it is a cult and this cult has been operating there and they were deciding at whatever to sacrifice these human sacrifices and they had to pick two girls i just can't imagine a cult operating and deciding to 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 just do it in their own backyard i mean you hear about these serial killers and they tend to travel or they tend to go from different areas i mean we've had murders in new hampshire here too you know and um a lot of times it's from out of the area type of thing so I don't know, but I'll be curious. I know I probably bored the heck out of you guys talking about this. I want to see, I would love to do a live stream. I'd love to do a live stream with somebody else who's into the true crime and, and just really talk about it. But I don't know. I don't know if they'll have anyone that'll actually watch it. So anyways, on my head is a very old wig. You can see it's a flopper right now. It doesn't usually flop like that, but I haven't really sprayed it or styled it um, or anything. Yeah, this is Spice Girl in Honey with Chai Latte, I think is the color. And I actually bought this wig, I don't know, maybe hmm, two years ago. And I think I got it on the Clarence section. Yeah, so I kind of like this cut. It's actually what my bio hair is supposed to look like right now with the cut that I have. Longer on the sides, shorter in the back, except I don't have this kind of volume. And this is actually pretty low density. So anyways, um, let me know if this was just a terrible idea and I will just not do another well i probably won't do another get ready with me because i don't think i got ready pretty good at all i thought it was pretty choppy out here and it's cold out here i'm not inside my house actually i'm in my my uh where my father's machine shop used to be and i just have a like a shower curtain behind me on the wall and uh, my bike is over there and jay's golf clubs are over there and the old pool table is over here so this is not set up for it but anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in my next video.